In this video, we're going to work another simple harmonic motion problem. Uh, it's a type of pendulum, but it's a pendulum created by a uniform bar that's been attached on one end and allowed to swing due to gravity pulling at the center of mass. So it says the uniform bar has a mass of 0.6 kilograms and a length of 0.4 meters. So this is 0.2 meters to the middle of the bar. And then, of course, to the end of the bar is another 0.2 meters. It's made to pivot on the end, making a pendulum. Now that means that right here, there's the force of gravity pulling straight down. And that gravity is creating a torque. A torque who has a moment arm right here. That's R. And there's an angle right here that's changing. That angle is theta. So we start with Newton's law. So some of the torques about a point, I'll call this point P, is equal to I P times the angular acceleration. The torque needs to have a plus and minus coordinate system. This angle is going positive like that away, and that's considered a positive alpha. So we need to make that the same way on our arrow here. So in calculating this torque, I have the weight, W, the moment arm, which is R, which is in our case L over 2. And then I need to find out how much of the force is perpendicular. Well, this component of the force is perpendicular. That would be the sine function, sine theta. And it's attempting to rotate this bar this way. But a positive torque is in the other direction. So we need a minus. And this is equal to IP. Now IP for a bar is 1 third ML squared. And this is alpha. So you get that from table or figure earlier in the book. In Giancali, I believe it's from figure 8.21 in Giancali. If you're using a different book, then it would come from another table or figure. Now, looking at this, we can do some things. We immediately see that we can cancel the M's because this is just mg. We can cancel one of the L's. And so we get minus g over 2 sine theta is equal to 1 third L times alpha. Now, remind you that the Harmonic oscillator needs to have an acceleration is equal to minus something time, which is a positive constant, times the displacement. So it needs to be in terms of theta. I'm going to rearrange this equation a little bit. Alpha is equal to, there's the minus sign. I've got a 3, which I'll bring up. 3g over 2l sine theta. This is not a harmonic oscillator unless I can replace sine theta with theta. For small angles, we have sine theta approximately theta in radians. Remember we just do not use degrees. So alpha is approximately minus 3 halves g over l times theta. Now this is a harmonic oscillator, provided this constant right here is made equal to the square of the angular frequency. But alpha equal minus omega squared theta for a simple harmonic oscillator. Therefore, omega squared is 3 halves g over l. Now, if we go back and look, 
we're asked to find the period, not the angular frequency. Well, we can do that. We know that if we take the square root of this, we get 3 halves g over L. All right. To find the period, we have omega times t is equal to 2 pi. This is just saying that sine and cosine is periodic to 2 pi. So t is 2 pi over omega, which is 2 pi times the square root of 2L over 3G. And of course, I want to check that a meter. I got a meter here that cancels. I got a second squared comes on top. Okay, so we've got all of the numbers that we need now to solve this problem. We need to get L 0.4 meters. Notice that the mass of the bar was irrelevant to the problem. It's a falling body. It doesn't care about the mass. So 0.4 meters. I got 2 pi times the square root of 2 times 0.4 meters. All that divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And if we punch this into our calculator, so we have the square root of 2 times 0.4 times 2 times second pi. We get 1.795 or about 1.80 in 0 seconds. Let me go back up here for just a little bit. Notice that you could have written this as 2 pi times the square root of L over G and the square root of 2 thirds. So this thing was the square root of 2 thirds T of the simple pendulum. So you're going to get an answer very similar to what you get with the simple pendulum, which is 2 pi square root of L over G. The difference is that you'll get this factor here from the fact that the moment of inertia is not ML squared and that the torque is not being applied at a distance L, but a moment arm of something less, like L over 2. So you can build a pendulum out of almost anything and swing. It could be a sphere, it could be a hula hoop, it could be lots of different things. Key thing about these interesting pendulums is that if you make their length four times longer, it makes them have twice the time. So by adjusting the length, by moving a little bit of mass on, for instance, a little uh, point mass on top of the bar, we could even make it have any value it wants. And that's how a grandfather clock works. If the value doesn't have enough inertia, then the, the period's a little short, then you increase it and make the period a little longer, and you can adjust it. All right, that finishes this problem.